Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood homo, Storbus Alter. So I'm recording this a couple days in advance because I'm not sure if I'll have the opportunity to. So this is going to upload approximately 10, 10 in the morning on June 21st in Eastern Central Time because I live in Ontario. June 21st, 2018, 10, 10, 10.30ish in the morning, I had a stroke. Uh, the first video after my stroke is Freedom Day 1. That is me literally as I got out of the hospital. The next video after that, I think, was So I Had a Stroke. It's about two weeks after. I've been unsure of what to say in this video. It's hard for me to know how to commemorate this event. 10, 10, 10, 30 in the morning, I was loaded up into an ambulance by some excellently skilled and trained paramedics. You are truly the quiet professionals that you were. Amazing work. It was put on stroke bypass or neuro redirect on what was known as CTAS-2 to go from Aurelia, Ontario, direct to the nearest neurotrauma center, which was an RVH in Barrie. That, without any hesitation, was unequivocally the worst moment in my entire life. Everything in that moment changed. My life changed. I changed. How I interact with the world changed. The relationships I have with people have changed. The stroke has been... Some cases the worst thing that ever happened to me, and other cases the best. But before we get there, I need to thank a few people, and I'm going to name people publicly, but I won't use your last names. I'd like to thank Kelsey and Leanne at work. You noticed before I did, or how bad it was getting, and you took actions to ensure my survival. You made sure I was okay, and then when shit went really south, you were there. The Parapenics, the, the crew that showed up and loaded me into the ram and got me to the emergency room. I don't know who you are. I'm going to track you down and thank you in person, shake your hand. Uh, thank you. I don't know who you are. I'm going to track you down. I'm going to get you something to commemorate the fact that you saved my life. And... Thank you. To the staff in the emergency room in RVH. To the staff on the ICU at RVH. To almost all the staff, with the exception of one at RVH, you were excellent, highly trained, highly skilled professionals. You, you saved my life. Uh, Dr. McKenzie, he happened to be tripping through the emergency room. He diagnosed me almost immediately after getting off the ambulance, well, being wheeled off the ambulance. <laughs> Not like I got up and walked away. That wasn't happening. <laughs> you literally got to see the worst day of my life. And you helped me survive that. To... Nancy, my physiotherapist, to carry my occupational therapist. Thank you. You you got to see me struggle. And some of those days probably weren't easy. Uh, Nancy more than Carrie. Um, there were days that were just excruciating. Just days that I'd spend half an hour with you, 45 minutes with you, and I'd have to take the rest of the day off and take a nap. You treated me with respect, encouragement, kindness. Uh, Nancy, you were still completely evil because you listened to my needs, my concerns, and we went and did stairs. Um, that was one of my 
concerns of being able to do stairs because unfortunately stairs are everywhere. We did six flights of stairs up, like six stories um, of stairs and six stories of stairs down several times during my physiotherapy because that's something I wanted to conquer because scares stairs at the time literally scared the shit out of me. Um, you put up with my dark humor, you participated in the dark humor, and you helped me get some skeleton ability back. Uh, still hate crossing my feet, so Nancy, if you happen to see this, thank you. Carrie, if you happen to see this, thank you. Um, to my therapist, Michaela, you are one of the reasons why this has become an easier journey. Uh, you allow me to vent. Um, I like to think you'd call me on my bullshit if I was being offside. Um, and you've helped me reconstruct myself. That is difficult. Been extremely difficult. To Dave. Really, be really good best friend, yet an even better asshole. Thank you for visiting me in the hospital. Uh, Patty, same thing. Uh, Norma, same thing. And um, Richard, Erica, and your little guy won't give his name. Uh, thank you again for visiting me in the hospital. Uh, that was greatly appreciated. Um, Patty, thank you for showing up with some food at 2 in the morning because I was hungry as fuck. Oh, and Sebastian and Dave for visiting me. Unfortunately, we didn't know I was getting out that day, uh, but thank you for showing up that day and, and, and being there. Um, and then one last amazing thank you to Katie, my girlfriend. You have seen me at my worst. <laughs> Truth. gonna take a second sorry about that this is not gonna be one of those weepy YouTube videos um, this is pretty emotional for me um, Katie you've done things for me that I've never had to ask anyone to do as an adult can you help me get dressed can you help me put on socks can you help bathe me can you help me tie my shoes? Thank you. You have... been... a larger help than you will ever know. You've helped keep me honest. You've question my faulty logic um, you've been encouraging you've been there um, when I wouldn't have expected you to stick around to be quite honest um, you've had to You've done things that no relationship should have to start out with someone doing for their partner. And I know that can't be easy to watch because I know some of my bad days have been just atrocious. Um, I know you have made some of those atrocious days better. So Katie, I know you're going to see this eventually. Thank you. Uh, you have been... The best thing that's ever happened, to be just quite honest about it. So, thank you. <clears throat> now, let's get into the non-emotional side of this. Now, I, I know I've left people out. This is just an abridged list. Um, on my Facebooks, I will post again a huge thank you to everyone that has been there in some way, shape, kind, or form uh, in the past year. And that'll be... 
done. That way, as I'm not going to start naming all the names. No, I'm not. Shut up. I'm not going to start naming all the names because it would take too long and I'm not going to name everyone here anyways. So, the last year. It's been a year. Today, once the video publishes, be what I consider my new first birthday. Learned a lot. You learn a lot after something such as this. Um, you learn a lot about yourself. Hold on. He wants attention. So you learn a lot after something like this. Because, in some ways, people don't know how to relate to you. They, they, they really don't. People don't know how to interact with you. People change how they interact with you. And I read about that in some of the stroke literature I found and, and on the stroke Facebook groups I belong to. And I'm thinking, oh no, my friends will be that way. People that I know will be that way. Yeah, they are. Uh, one thing I've learned since my stroke, my circle of friends has gotten you okay you drinking again you on the scotch you promised okay my circle of friends has gotten extremely smaller the people the number of people i trust i mean actually trust has has, has gotten smaller as well um and that's just a byproduct of the stroke um and a byproduct of the people that don't really matter are really going to find a way not to be there. And that's just the way it is. Um, the people that you didn't think mattered or cared will step up. And they will show up um, when least expected. So... that 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 was a change um, having to understand I gonna be honest who is worthy of spending time with that's that's the way I look at it now who who in my world is worthy of me actually engaging them and that's not to have some inflated sense of hubris it's like well if you really haven't made the effort to be there in six or 12 months, why am I going to make the effort to try to be there now? <clears throat> you, meaning the, 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 the royal you, the generic you, if you, the individual, have not taken the time to spend time in a meaningful and engagement and engaging fashion with someone after a major health event, why should that person bother to just take the time to spend with you? It just, it's just sort of a tit-for-tat situation. Um, it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, so what it comes down to is I've had to learn, in some cases, relearn things that I learned between, you know, ages zero and six. Um, I still have problems tying shoes. Uh, it, it's just difficult at times. Um, I still have balance issues. Um, I still have difficulty focusing and, and, and tuning out noises. I still have memory issues. There's so many issues I've had since my stroke. But ultimately, I just try to live every day like it's going to get better. I don't try to hide myself away. I don't try to, I don't try to focus on the negative. I don't try to focus on, you know, the bad things that are going on. Cause trust me, some days there are more bad things going on than there are good things. I try to focus on the fact that you're going to get through this. I don't know what that journey is going to look like, but you're going to get through this. This, this is a winnable fight. This is a this is something you can 
not only survive, but thrive through. This is an event that is going to change you and is going to redefine how you are going to live your life. I know there are people in my world or people that have formerly been in my world that don't see past the stroke. They just see me in my perception as damaged goods. They don't perceive me as having any value anymore. I, I know that. I know that for a fact. Um, and that's just in the nature and quality of their interactions I've had with that individual or individuals. I know they don't see value. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. Because I don't think there's any way to creatively or constructively convince them that they're just wrong. And it's, it's really not my job to change your mind. Or maybe it is, I don't know. Um, I don't see a mechanism or method to do that with, so I don't know how to do that. But that's just my perception is there are people out there that are going to, they're going to see you after the stroke as just a, a damaged goods and they're they're going to disassociate from you. They're going to not help you pursue the same level of opportunities as you had before. And, and those people exist and there's, there's really nothing you can do about that. They're just there. That's, that's just it. Right? Those people are there. You're going to have to deal with them. You're going to have people that are going to step up and be there and then they're going to help you with some of the mundane things in your world, like shopping, uh, like actually going shopping, uh, maybe even going shopping for you. There are people in your world that are going to be there um, that you are going to need to talk to and they're going to be of great counsel and advice. Then there's going to be people that you think are friends and you're going to try to turn to them for help. Then they're basically going to treat you in a demeaning, belittling, disrespectful, discriminatory fashion, and you're going to realize that they're, they're, they've probably never actually been a friend. You've just thought they were. That's difficult. That's difficult. Um, I don't know. I don't know where my journey's going. I really don't. I know I've got goals. And I know the goals now are more a case of time and being able to get to where I want to be. I'll be honest, I don't know if I'll ever get actually to that goal. That's, that's something I don't know. I don't know if me getting there is a reality. I know me wanting to get there is a reality. I'm going to do what I can to do to get there. But ultimately, if you're still here after 18 minutes and 20 seconds... And you've had a brain injury or you've had a stroke. All I can say is this. Don't give up. I know there are going to be days that look dark and gloomy and just absolutely shitty. I know there's going to be days where lifting your head off of the pillow takes all the energy you can find and muster just to be able to try to sit up. I know there's going to be days where your body and your brain aren't getting along and trying to go up or downstairs is pretty much going to end up in a slip, trip, and fall. I know there's days you're going to have to turn to someone and you're going to have to ask them to do something for you that you've never had to ask someone to do before. Like, hey, can you help me put on socks? Can you help me tie my shoes? Can you help me in the shower? I don't mean help get me in the shower. I mean, you're going to have to help bathe me today. I appreciate all of these things require you to check your sense of pride at the door. I, I understand that some of these things require you to check your sense of self-esteem at the door. I, I understand and accept the fact that some of these things might require you to take your sense of self-worth and check it at the door. Because you're now, as a fully functioning, fully grown adult, having to ask someone to do something for you that you've never had to ask before. I get that. <clears throat> but on that note, 
this video simply marks the one year anniversary since I had my stroke. And if you've been enjoying what you've been watching for the past 12 months, please like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get the notifications so it goes dingy dingy dingy. Um, if you know someone going through a post-stroke journey, either either post-stroke, post-brain injury, or someone supporting someone in post-stroke or post-brain injury world, please point the channel out to them. They might get some value out of the content I generate. If you want to get in contact with me directly, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. The link is in the description down below. You can also reach me on Twitter. The description is a link down below. Or again, you can leave a comment down below. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who immediately has a sense of lack of balance or uh, they're confused. I had that. I had a lack of balance. I felt a little bit confused. Someone had vision problems. Someone who can't see in one eye, only sees in grayscale, can't move their eyes in a certain direction, only sees a little dot in the world. I did not have that one. Someone has facial droop. There's a noticeable visual drooping of the face muscles. I had that one. Someone who can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. I think I had that one. Um, someone who has uh, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Had all of those. Uh, someone who uh, can't smile equally, effectively, or at all. I know I had that one. Uh, someone who... Uh, has general body weakness or weakness on one side. Had that one, weakness on my right hand side. Or has the inability to stand unaided. Oh yeah, I found the fucking floor. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.